As the clock was counting down to the MLB's 2021 trade deadline, it was pretty clear we were watching something historic. This season's trades were not only the highest number of trades that have ever occurred in MLB history, but also the most talent traded between teams. Several teams decided to boost their rosters for a shot at the postseason, while others took a step back and reordered their finances for a rebuild. And because of this, there are a ton of new questions that we can dive into, specifically around players like Rizzo and Gallo, who were recently collected by the Yankees. Like, how will moving to a new home affect their performance? And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. So in order to do that, let's first review what last week's video was on, Park Factors. But wait, did anybody else notice something weird about that first slide? Let's go back. In 1991, 92, and 94, the year-to-date war of the players traded was actually negative? I would be incredibly interested to see how that panned out for those teams. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Back to the video. So yes, park factors. Like I said, since we recently did a video on this topic, I'm going to keep this review pretty short and sweet. Unlike in most other sports, MLB stadiums do not all mimic the exact same dimensions. Some can be smaller, some can be bigger, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. Don't ask me why, I didn't build them. The dimensions of the park play a significant role in how hitters and pitchers will perform in that park over time as compared to others. But the park dimensions isn't all there is to it. All of these items and more affect how the ball will fly once it's struck by a bat. Luckily for us, the MLB has no shortage of data, so it can compare how a batted ball with the exact same metrics typically performs across all 30 MLB stadiums. Some parks may be prone to allowing more extra base hits, and some may allow fewer home runs than average. And all of these little things add up over the course of a stadium's lifetime to determine if the park plays more favorably to pitchers or hitters. Again, I did a whole video on this subject in the past, so if you want a deeper explanation with examples of how exactly different parks affect every single play that happens over an MLB season, check out the link below. And that brings us to the point of today's video. With some of the top players in the game packing up and flying to a new city over the past week, we can begin to dive into the question of how will their new home turf affect their performance. Like I mentioned in the beginning, one of the best examples of two hitters affected the most by the trade deadline are going to be the two power hitting lefties, both traded to the Yankees last week in Anthony Rizzo and Joey Yao. Let's take a look how Yankee Stadium could change how these two hitters produce as compared to their old parks, starting with Gallo. Oh, whoa, sorry, wrong team. That's a little better. Minus the beard, of course. Joey Gallo is having one of the best seasons of his career so far this year. Many of you know him for the crazy shifts teams have put on him, or the fact that he's had multiple seasons in the bigs where he hits more home runs than singles. But he's truly a legit hitter. This season, he is currently tied for 7th in home runs, while sporting a 132 OPS+, plus, putting him just outside the top 25 of all hitters in the league. With another year of team control left in his contract, it's a big deal that Gallo has moved this season, especially to his new home, Yankee Stadium. Comparing the park favorability between Rangers home field, Globe Life Field, and Yankee Stadium for left-handed hitters, we can see that there is a significant difference for how these two parks play. Globe Life Field, which hasn't seen a full season yet because it's so new, has had a park factor of 89 for lefty home runs in 2020, meaning that lefties are 11% less likely to hit a home run here than the average, which ranks 21st in the league. And so far in 21, they're still slightly below average at 98. However, Yankee Stadium ranks as the 5th best place for lefties to send one out of the park, with a 17% higher chance for that to occur. To put that in perspective, Joey Gallo has hit 25 home runs this year, and if he played all of his games at Yankee Stadium, based on all of his past batted balls, an extra 4 hits would have left the yard. Now, for one of the best power hitters in the game, that may not seem like that much, because when Gallo gets a hold of one, it goes a long way anyways. So the short porch and right may not affect him as much considering only three lefties in the MLB over the past two years have hit the ball harder than Gallo does in the air. He ranks among the top categories in several batted ball metrics. Most notably, he sits atop the 97th percentile in barrel percentage. You get the idea, when Gallo hits the ball, it goes far. And the short porched, left-handed hitter favorable park in Yankee Stadium is only going to add to the fireworks show he puts on at the plate. But then there's Anthony Rizzo. And as a lifelong Cubs fan, it pains me to cover up those blue pennies here. Anyways, although Rizzo is a power hitter from the left side, he doesn't have the same output that Gallo does, 
he puts the ball in play a lot more. His top ranking category for power hitters comes in his max exit velocity in the 92nd percentile. So good, but not Gallo good. But where they are incredibly similar is the fact that Rizzo is coming to New York from a park that isn't necessarily favorable to lefties either. Wrigley Field ranks 18th with a 9% less likely chance for lefties to hit homers here. If Rizzo were to play all 162 games, and I know that's not the way it works either, his 14 home runs this season would turn into 23. And this really should come to nobody's surprise just by looking at the stadiums. From an article on MLB.com covering Rizzo and Gallo's fit in Yankee Stadium, they display this graphic overlaying both Wrigley Field and Yankee Stadium. You can tell just looking down the right field line that there's a much higher chance for balls to be hit down the line to go over the fence in New York than in Chicago. Pretty clearly. And that matters a lot for a hitter like Rizzo who puts a ball in play quite frequently as compared to Gallo. But that alley down the line in Chicago isn't good for nothing. An interesting stat I found while diving into these two players in stadiums was that prior to leaving the Cubs, Rizzo was tied for the lead in triples on the Cubs active MLB roster. That's pretty surprising because his sprint speed is marked at 2 feet per second slower than the average MLB player, putting him in the bottom 17th percentile. How does a hitter who is slower than 83% of players end up leading his team in triples? Well, that's Park Factors for you in a nutshell. You can expect that number not to grow as much throughout his time in New York. So what are my main takeaways from this fun little video? Well, if baseball were played in a vacuum, these numbers would do an incredible job projecting exactly how each hitter is going to do, and that's the goal of putting together all of these things. But our sport is played with real life people on a real life but differing field of play. And the point of today's video was to help illustrate further that the park that each player plays in has an effect on what happens on every single pitch. And you want to hear me dive deeper into park factors, check out that link in the description. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.